What's up, Military Millionaires? I'm your host, David Prey, and today we are here with another GoBro, Brian Lubin. And Brian and I have known each other for, I don't know, probably a year now online, maybe a little bit longer online and then in uh, different events. But this is just going to be a lot of fun. So Brian, if you don't know who he is, he's the host of the Action Academy podcast, and he actually has one of the best written newsletters uh, for I, – I don't. What's your, actually, before we even dig in, what is your open rate right now for your newsletter? Welcome to the Military Millionaire Podcast, where we teach service members, veterans, and their families how to build wealth through personal finance, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. I'm your host, David Pere, and together with my co-host, Alex Felice, we're here to be your no BS guides along the most important mission you'll ever embark on, your finances. Vehicle one, you're clear to depart friendly lines. Roger, Vic one, Oscar Mike. Hey guys, if you're looking to take your investing, business, life, or just yourself to the next level, then I have something for you. The War Room Real Estate Military Mastermind Group is a mastermind group that meets weekly in small groups of five to six people to help you hold yourself accountable and really experience that growth. But we also have a monthly guest speaker that we bring in, and we've had guest speakers that talk about mindfulness, taxes, we're bringing in somebody to talk about marketing. We bring in very specific topics that will adhere to very broad, any any kind of real estate investing or investing or entrepreneurship that you want to do, and we'll really help you out. We let you ask these speakers questions and get very personal with them. And then back to the small groups, weekly accountability for what you're trying to achieve and just being surrounded by like-minded people. And they say your network is your net worth. I know that's an overused phrase, but I recommend that you check it out. So just shoot an email to wrmastermind at gmail.com. Once again, that's wrmastermind at gmail.com. And we'll send you some more information. 64%. Yeah, it's nuts, man. So but it's not like a massive audience. It's it's like 1,500 right now, but we're growing. Dude, it, it, so the reason he has it, if you don't know anything about email stuff, like 15 to 18% is kind of like the norm, like the industry average for like sales stuff. Um 60% is insane. And the reason is because of the value that he puts out in his email every week. It's probably the only oh, email it, that man. I actually like newsletter that I actually read. Uh, and, and I don't know if it's always because of the content or if it's like, man, how the hell does he write these emails? I need to learn how to do this. So uh, that's a total Dude, sidebar. I appreciate it, man. That's the first time <laughs> I've gotten the newsletter shout out. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's good stuff, dude. Um, but we're going to I, – that's the, right in the middle of the intro. That's weird. But so Brian – the thing that he's done that I love is so he did B2B sales. He was in corporate America uh, and he quit his job this year and was able to you know be done. But he did what uh, – so the struggle that I see a lot of people make is they get so wrapped up in that that they forget to like live life while they're trying to achieve all of that. And so he found a really unique way to combat that where he quit his job and then left and traveled the world. He's been traveling since uh, July, I believe, right? Five months. Yep. And uh, yep. so we're going to talk about how he did that, some of the things that are changing, and we're just going to have fun because Brian's a badass. So welcome to the show, man. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, guys, hopefully we'll be able to add a lot of value to all of your lives. Uh, we're going to talk about some good stuff today. We'll talk about the finances. We'll talk about death of identity, ego, going from passive income, passionate income, like the whole nine yards. So hopefully we'll be able to add as much value to you guys as we possibly can. So buckle up. Let's rock and roll. Yeah. So I guess for starters, uh, where are you where are you calling in from? Where, where are we recording right now? Oh, you know, just Alabama. Nah, I'm in uh, Floripa, Brazil. I'm in South Brazil. I'm looking out my window right now and I'm looking at this rainforest and the ocean in the background. Um, I have been traveling full time, like you said, for five months. I went to Greece. I lived in the island of Greece for a month. Um, Mykonos, Santorini, uh, Crete and Paxos. Then I did Barcelona for a month. I've been to Amsterdam, Madrid, Portugal, Budapest, Germany, Switzerland, all over Europe, now down in Brazil for a month. And then I'll probably jet back home to the U.S. because I've got a hankering for college football. My <laughs> blood's starting to run red, white, and blue again. So it's about that time to come back home, boys. And it's it's been a fun, fun journey. A lot of uh, A lot of growth, a lot of discovery 
it's been a it's been a really good time. I came to this trip to try to figure out who the next version of me is, and I think I found who that guy is. So oh, excited about that it. That is exciting. We're definitely going to unpack that. But I at least have to pause and ask. I can't ask you what your favorite place was, but I can probably get away with asking you like top three. That might make it a little easier for you. Like where <laughs> top where three. were the where were the either either the best place or the best thing you did? I love exploring new cultures, and I got to figure out where I'm going next. Yeah, top three. I'll give you a hybrid answer. So uh, Greece, Greece to start because, you know, we spent money like an asshole in Greece because uh, that was on my bucket list. That was my vivid vision. And that's why I really like my advice and my mentors from people that were in GoBundance, they were saying, hey, you know, this is your goal. Like this is the accomplishment of this massive, big, hairy, audacious goal that you've been pursuing for years and years and years. You need to celebrate. Don't nickel and down Greece. So I had like the quintessential, you swim out into the pool from the suite and you see the sunset right there in front of you. So that was, that was Greece. Oh, that your was pictures top looked ex- wonderful. That was a top experience. Um, I would say that for number two, it's a tie between Budapest and Amsterdam. I would say if you like the canal stuff, um, I wouldn't even go to Venice. Go to Amsterdam instead because there's so much more stuff to do. And the canals are even cooler than they are in Venice. And then third would be I went by accident to the island of Madeira in Portugal. And I got a motorcycle that I haven't ridden a motorcycle in probably three years. And I'm not very used to it. So it took me a little bit to get used to it because you have like your motorcycle legs that you have to get back back going. But uh, I rode a motorcycle. I, I booked one of those for a week in Madeira. And I just rode around the freaking island of Madeira and saw those giant black cliffs. It was freaking awesome, oh, man. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, it's funny. You it was not always like this, though. Oh, no, this is this has <laughs> pretty much been your entire life. Yeah, absolutely. No, no one's going to remember <laughs> anything else. No, let's uh, let's unpack that. What was what was w2 brian like how did we how did we come to this point and then we're going to talk about all the fun stuff and the vision and all that stuff because that's what i well really because that's what i'm struggling with right now and this is my show so i'm going to use it to <laughs> i'm going to get something man. out of this so too. we'll spend <laughs> yeah we'll spend the next 40 minutes going over my back story talking about wrestling in high school no 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 <laughs> i do a podcast too guys so i've got this down to about about a minute uh, my entire story of my life here in 60 seconds okay ready go Uh, graduated college, got a marketing degree. I was one of the few guys that actually wanted to get into sales by like choice. And so I did that because I realized I wasn't going to make money in marketing. So I went into sales, uh, got up to the top of the company, uh, blood, sweat, and tears, gave all of my life. That was my entire identity was clean shaven, shirt and tie that I was going to be slinging software and enterprise deals for the rest of my life. That was going to be who I was. Made it to the top of the company, won sales rep of the year, rookie of the year, won all the awards, got all the accomplishment, made it to the top of the mountain, realized I was climbing the wrong mountain. So a couple of different pivot points happened there, essentially to break it down, to get to the rest of the conversation. COVID hit. They decided to randomly just not pay me when I finally hit all of my goals for the company. Uh, they owed me a $70,000 cash bonus and they just said, nope, never mind, not paying you. And I was like, wait, is that legal? And uh, so anyways, long story short, that was when I realized that corporate had its hold over me and they could do anything that they wanted. And so I said, if I'm the type of guy that can work this hard and I have this work ethic and I have this skill set, might as well do it on my own. So instead of making other people rich, I'll make myself rich because there's this parable. There's the story of this of the CEO that shows this employee their Ferrari and they say, hey, you see this Ferrari? And they're like, yeah, man, that's so cool. He goes, man, if you work hard enough, one day you may get me another one of those. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love so that. Yeah. I was like, man, I don't want to do that. So uh, I started my uh I started buying real estate and I don't have that sexy of a portfolio, only four units, but that allowed me to get my baseline financial independence because I did what was called house hacking that I know you talk about a lot. So my overhead expenses were low. I had $3,200 coming in from co-living expenses, uh, co-living income because of my rental properties. And I was like, okay, cool. Baseline finance is covered. Now what? Grew, started a podcast, wasn't intending to make revenue from it, ended up making revenue from it. Pop that on top of there. And I was like, okay, I'm cooking now. So in March of this year, I left that W2 position and I said, I'm going to go travel around the world. And July 6th, hopped on a one-way flight. And uh, I've been in Southern United States, so I haven't really traveled before this. So it's been a hell of a ride over the last, last couple of months. A lot of self-discovery. Dude. Th- so this was your first time out of the country? 
I've been out of the country. Oh, okay. I went to Italy one time for a week, you know, because back then it was two weeks of PTO, right? So I did, okay, I was like, I'm going to go to Italy for seven days and come home. And that was like the grandest adventure of my life to that point. And, uh, you know, Mexico a couple of times, but just like normal white boy Southern America <laughs> stuff, like yeah. white bread travel. <laughs> but now, no, we've really committed to it. And uh, I went into this, I went into this trip to really push past my comfort zone and really ask the question, you know, what does the eight figure version of Brian Lubin look like? Who is that guy? What questions does he ask? Who does he hang out with? Uh, what does he do? What is, what are his habits and his routines? And so what I do every day is I try to bring that version of that guy into my present day reality and try to reinforce that identity through the actions that I take. And so my goal was to do this trip and figure out, get in touch with that version of me in the future and bring him present. And I feel like I did a pretty good job of accomplishing that. So now we're rocking and rolling and I started a media company and that's what I'm growing. Dude, that's a that's a really cool way to think about that. And I, and I love when people phrase things this way, like, um, instead of saying, you know, oh man, I'm stuck between, should I go this way or this way? Asking the question, like, what would a billionaire do? Would a billionaire go, you know, like, like framing questions in different ways. So you're asking the exact same question, but you're like tricking your brain into thinking differently. I hadn't actually thought about it from the mindset of like, who is eight figure Dave? Like, who is that guy? Uh, and then back playing it, that back planning it. That's, that, I mean, it makes perfect sense. I, I feel like I've heard that before and just probably whoop, right over the head, but it train it trains you to ask questions in a different way because the quality of questions that you ask dictates the quality of your life. And that's a Tony Robbins quote. So what I find is that you have a couple of different mindset levels, right? So you have like that corporate mindset that's, I work X amount of hours. So I make this much money. I work more hours. I get overtime, hence more money. And then you get to that like early entrepreneurial mindset to where maybe some people are listening to this on the show and they relate to this where they're like, okay, now I've kind of broken away from my time is attached to money. Um, that's kind of decoupling now. And now I've got a little bit more autonomy and control over my time. And I'm starting to start the delegation process to kind of multiply my time and money. And they get up to that maybe six figure, seven figure mark. But to ask eight figure questions is going to be a conversation about how do you impact other people at scale? How do you solve another problem at scale? And so it's a bigger question to ask. And so it's forcing me to build a business that answers a different question and scratches a different itch to where before it was a question of in corporate, how do I make six figures? And I did that. I was making over 210 each year. And then you get to entrepreneur to where you're like, okay, I'm going to solo my way up this mountain. But then once you get up to that eight figure level and nine figure, that's like Mount Everest, right? And so to climb Mount Everest, you're not going to climb Mount Everest by yourself. You're not just going to wing it. There's a team that's required. So you need two people to climb Mount Everest. You need the Sherpa, like the guide that's been up and down the mountain their entire lives. And they're going to show you where to go. And then you need the people that are strapped up next to you that are helping you not to bitch out and go back down because it's cold. So now it's a different question that you're trying to ask to be able to accomplish this new goal. So now the questions, types of questions I'm asking are, okay, what team do I need around me? Like what mentors should I reach out to for advice? What problem am I trying to solve at scale? And now my problem has become, I want to help 1 million people leave unfulfilling jobs for a life of fun, freedom and fulfillment by December 1st, 2024. That's the goal. And so if you give enough, enough other people what they want, that's the fastest way to get what you want. And so that's the goal. That's what I'm working on right now. I love it. And I love, so I'm going to just break down something he said there. Uh, a lot of people, I'm sure they all heard this, but my favorite part of that entire conversational piece was where you said, and I'm trying to make sure I don't mess up the words here, but uh, that in order to get to that level, you know that you need to like, who is the team around you? Who do you need as a mentor in your corner? And what do you, who do you need to become? And I think what's important about that is that those are the questions you're asking, right? You talk to a lot of people who are like, oh, I want to be successful. And like the first thing they think of is like, how much money do I need to raise? Like it's the hows, right? Or the, the like, how does this work? How does this do whatever? But it's funny because I'm really looking into exploring the idea of 
getting into development for real, like bigger, bigger development projects in real estate. Cause I'm trying to find that thing that excites me. And so my first go-to over the last two weeks was texting people who have either already done that or architects or buddies that were project managers on like $6 million developments um, and just scheduling lunches. I'm like, hey, how do I get around these people? And so it's cool to hear you kind of rephrase that, like th- that the, the mind is spinning in almost the same way. Instead of like, how do I find the money to make this thing happen and the logistics? It's like, no, no, just before any of that happens, like who do I need to get next to that's either already done this or can help me get there because that's the fastest way I think building the team and the people around you that will just pull you I I don't know it's such a it's such an easy thing to like internalize when you think of it from like a coach you said you're a football guy so like from a coaching standpoint it's like you want to be a quarterback for like the NFL you should probably get around quarterbacks from the NFL or somebody who's yeah and that's that and that's an important thing that you just said. So easy, easy versus hard, easy and hard versus simple and difficult, right? Two completely different things, right? So simple and difficult are actualities. Easy and hard is perception of actuality. So simple and difficult would be rocket science. F and difficult, <laughs> right? <laughs> like most people Elon. can't figure... Yeah, most people don't have access to the skill sets and tools to do rocket science or quantitative algebra and all this stuff. But real estate is very simple and repetitive. It's something that's been very documented. There's millions and millions of people that have done any niche in real estate that you're trying to do. Yet we get stuck in the easy versus hard mentality because that's our perception of the difficulty of said task. So a lot of us think that things are very difficult and very hard when in reality they're they are they are hard based of our perception but in actuality it's not so much for example if you go to a very high level uh real estate syndicator and you say that's raised like hundreds of thousands of dollars millions of dollars and it's got thousands of units and you say hey how do i buy a freaking eight unit He's going to think it's the easiest thing in the entire world. He's going to be like, this is simple. Whereas when you're first starting out, you're like, holy crap, this is the most difficult math problem I've ever solved is underwriting this eight unit, right? But it's the same problem. You're just looking at it in different lenses. So instead of having a, instead of playing a game of, simplifying these actual problems like the real estate deals and the investment strategies, which people focus on is like, how can I get better at underwriting and doing all this stuff? My suggestion is instead change the lens and the frame that you're viewing the problem through and then play that game. And which you can do playing that game. You can rent other people's experience exactly like you just said to where for me, do have I built an eight figure media company before? No. Cool. Do I know people that have? Yes. So I'm reaching out to like Dorkin that built bigger pockets. I'm reaching out to other people that are making like $500,000 a month with their media companies, Sam Parr, these guys. I'm like, okay, how did you do it? And then I just reinvent what they did, right? And my own personal taste and flair. So if you just apply that same framework to whatever you're trying to do in real estate investing or anything, and you fall in love with the process, and then you just blind, like you just follow what people have done that have been proven the process. And then you focus all of your attention on building your mindset and the way that you're viewing things through and the questions that you're asking, like that's rocket fuel. Yeah. And, and the real cool thing is that you're at that point where, you know, I I don't necessarily know what your horizontal income, like what your, what your gross, you know, what you're bringing in every month, but I know that it's enough to cover your expenses. And so you've created this. Yeah. About 20, 25,000 oh. right now. It's nothing sexy. I mean, well, <laughs> you say that. Well, that, and that's, say, and that's it's, comparative, it's, right? Say, that's, that's in the world, right? That's in the world that we're at right now, because when you hang out and that's another piece of advice is if you're a big fish in a small pond, you don't have any more room to grow. But if you po- keep pond hopping and you make that a habit and then you all of a sudden you're in the ocean and you're a big fish, but now you're in the ocean. Like most of my friends make 200,000 a month. So I'm like 20,000 a month is a rounding error. <laughs> it is, it is fun to, when you start messing with the financial thermostat and really start to crank it up and you realize it's almost, it's almost, it's weird. Actually, it gets me into like trouble with my wife because you know, I'll, I'll come <laughs> home and I'll be like, she's like, Oh, how was work today? And I'm like, Oh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it was really productive. I just, you know, and I'm and like, I'm all like, oh, I didn't get nearly as much done as I wanted to today or something. Right. And then we'll be talking and I'll just casually mention that I, you know, got a, a referral check in for something. And I, 
forget that like the amount of that check is more than there there have been on more than one occasion where I've just like nonchalantly been like oh yeah but this happened and then like moved on and i've been getting the glare and i realize like oh that was more than you make every month crap yeah like (laughs) but let me add an important caveat here right this isn't me blindly having these beliefs i need to include that important caveat this isn't me being some punk 27 28 year old kid that's just like oh i choose to believe things because out of thin air right no like the reason I believe these things and I know them to be true is because I have that podcast, Action Academy podcast, where I do five episodes a week and I interview seven to 10 figure entrepreneurs. That's my thing. So what do I do every single day from when I wake up to when I go to bed? I am either interviewing entrepreneurs that are way more successful than I am, or I'm on other podcasts with entrepreneurs that for the most part are more successful than I am. And in between that, I'm, I'm talking to people and meeting new people. So like I've had over a hundred hours of interviews on my show with guys that are like eight figure to nine figure to 10 figure billionaire entrepreneurs. And so I can just simply take all of the redundancies and all the things that just keep popping up over and over again and be like, okay, I can with a very reasonable, <laughs> you know, conclusion say that this is fact. And so that's where I operate from. Well, and I, you actually, that was the, one of the emails that I read. I think the entire thing, word through word, was it might have been three weeks ago. I don't know, a couple of weeks back. One, your, one of your emails was like the top X lessons that I've learned from interviewing over a hundred, you know, millionaires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you did a really good job breaking it down. I'm like, oh, yep, that's true. Yep. Oh, and, and they're all very. You're exactly right. They're very similar, very repeatable. Uh, seemingly simple things. And it's funny because when you first start investing, you hear people say it and you're like, eh, it's all like foo-foo. It's all like, oh yeah, believe. Oh yeah, that's easy for you to say. And then you, the more you hang around people, the more you realize like, oh no, like the belief set and the mindset leads everything. Yeah. So those are the two hardest nuts to crack, right? So if people listening to this podcast can figure out how to change a belief and how to change an identity then that's a win, right? That's a freaking home run for your drive to work or the drive from base or, for, or back home. And so I, there's a couple of different ways that I've seen to crack a belief or to crack a, an identity. So for a belief, a tangible way that I do that is that, you know, uh, little fish, big pond analogy. And that's just, and I call that um, immersion. So immersion leads to conversion, and so what, what you do is you just purposely put yourself in position to where you are surrounded by people that are operating at such an astronomically higher level than you that your beliefs are forced to change to even be allowed back into the room. So it's like, it's either you're like shit or get off the pot. So like in abundance, if you're not operating at that certain level and having that certain level of conversation, you're not worth having a conversation with. And it's not personal. It's just fact. So the fastest way to change a belief is be around enough people that are where you're, where you want to be and pay attention to what they believe versus what you believe and then see where the discrepancies are. And then at that point, that's when you can take a look, cold, hard look at your life and say, okay, I'm here, they're there. What do I need to change about my beliefs? Right. And so that was one of my beliefs was the woo woo stuff, the visualization, affirmation, vivid vision, doing all that, that type of stuff. I thought it was complete bull crap. But it's actually the main stuff that the big people do, right? And then when it comes to identity, identity is a really sticky one that I know a lot of you guys are um, are having issues with, especially if you're leaving active duty and then you're going into this new phase and chapter of your life. For me, I was shifting my identity from corporate Brian to entrepreneur Brian to traveling around the world. You know, I kind of jumped into the fire really quickly. So for me, when I talk about this process of bringing that eight figure version of me back into reality, that sounds woo woo, but here's how I practice that, right? So I ask the question, like, what does that guy do? And then I bring the actions down back into present day reality. And I write down what I think that guy would do. And then I do the actions. So by doing the actions, you reinforce your belief of who that person is. And now you're like, I am that person because I am doing what that person's doing. The only difference is time under the bar or, or time horizon. So like, if I'm doing those actions, I know I'm going to get to where I want to go. It's just a matter of time. So you, you kind of reminded me of something I used to do way back in the day uh, when I was a big, an avid runner. Um, I used to enjoy all these endurance 
events, but I, I always had a problem committing to like the next big challenge. Like I would, you know, like, ah, do I want to run a half Ironman? Do I not? And I found that when the easiest way for me to do that, to actually accomplish these things was I had a couple of friends who were nut jobs that would always say yes. And so I would just like, man, I'm really on the fence about, should I run my first half marathon? Hey, Casey, you want to run a half marathon in three weeks? And then if, you know, Casey says yes, then it's like, well, crap, now I have to show up. Now you got to do and it. And that's – And now you're a marathon it, runner. It, it's it's true. Uh, I have run a couple half Ironmans and, and almost died on a full, but um, did not finish. But uh, the um, the idea of just surrounding yourself with people who have achieved what you want to achieve, it's like you can't you can't fail in that environment. They're not going to let you. And people get nervous, I think, about reaching out to that whoever that person is or getting in their circle. And it's like, I've never once had somebody more successful than me tell me that I'm crazy for dreaming big. The people who always, the, all the people who tell you no and, and they say and everything else are the people that, you know, are beneath. Yeah. It's the crabs in a bucket, right? Yeah. The danger is actually planning too small and then accomplishing it. So those people that think that like the pinnacle of success in life is a six figure salary um, riddled with debt uh, to where they are working until they're 65 years old. And then maybe they get a shot at 10, 15 years of arthritis and fun. So like that's their, that's their version of win. And that's not, you know, you know, that used to be me too. I'm not, I'm not crapping on it. I'm just saying like there, there's just different levels to it. And it's just, it's been a wild ride being able to, have exposure to that because every everything that we talk about, you and I both, is on the shoulders of giants, right? And these people that we learn from, like even the David Osborns of the world worth over a hundred million dollars, they learn from mentors. He learned from Gary Keller himself. And so a lot of people that are listening to this may struggle with um, imposter syndrome when it comes to terms of these big networking events or making your move to that person and trying to appear interesting or smart enough to earn a spot in that person's world. And I will give you the ultimate networking hack that will make you the most loved, beloved, and poured into person in any networking event or room that you go into. And that tip is this. You have to shift your mentality from being the most interesting person in the room to being the most interested person in the room. So when you go up to those people that are killing it and they're where you want to be, instead of trying to bang your chest and say, oh, I've syndicated, you know, 500 units. And they're like, OK, well, I syndicated 5000 last month. So what? Like instead of that, you go up to them and you approach them with, hey, you know, I'm Brian, you know, like what do you got going on in life? And then you just are sincerely interested in them and learning about them. Like when you do that, you're their favorite person in the world. And so that's my hack that I use because in our rooms in GoBundance, I'm always usually like the lowest guy on the totem pole. But no, people wouldn't really know that based off of how friendly I am with and how good of friends I am with most of the room because I just simply care about them more than projecting my value, right? My value is that I care about them. So if you just do that, like that's such a cheat code. Oh, You're going to take off in the world. It's funny. My favorite presentation that I've been giving lately, and I've done it for about a year now, I have a presentation on like networking and content marketing and it, it, all about like how to, you know, whatever. And I reference this book called The Like Switch a lot, which is like all about, um, you know, verbal, like nonverbal cues and ways to network and build facilitate trust and whatever. Uh, but I literally gave this presentation last week in Kansas City at their RIA. And one of those points that I drive home a million times is like, so yeah, you give your little elevator pitch about who you are. And then you start asking them questions and you shut up and you just listen and you just build rapport and, and you are interested in what they are saying. Because if you show up to network with someone and you're an asshole right? <laughs> As opposed yeah. to just giving yeah. or caring, all they're going to feel is the the cringe of like, oh, this guy's just trying to take energy. And so you absolutely hit the nail on the head. Like, and that's hard for, I mean, I'm a talker, right? So that's, that's, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, we met at one of these events. That's how we met. Yeah. And I asked you a bunch of questions. That's true. And we're still, still hanging out. We're still buddies. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, just cause I'm jealous. Dude, and another cool, 
Yeah. And another cool point of that is another thing to just really drive the point home and land the plane. Um, if you really want to be memorable, so maybe that's how you stand out is being very interested in them, but how you stay memorable and how you earn the spot, maybe that earns you like the intro, but how you stay in their world is whenever they give you advice, you need to go above and beyond to do the said advice and document it and send it back to them. Nobody does that stuff. But like if somebody were to reach out to me and say, hey, Brian, you know, I'm just getting started. Like I'm trying to figure out how to do real estate and do all this stuff in my job. I say, cool, buy this book. Then like normally it's just crickets, right? Because here's what here's what happens. So it's like and I know that you've experienced this over and over again. When you first get like some semblance of success, people reach out and they say, hey, can you help me? And then you pour hours into them. Right. You're like, okay, let me tell you everything I know. And then all of a sudden you get burned like a dozen times because they don't do shit with it. Yep. And they come and back like, okay, asking cool, for more. Do- That's the best part yeah, is when they like, don't okay, do the cool, advice asshole. and then they come back yeah. and you're like, and you're, did you do this? I'm like, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah. So then now people are like, okay, what do I do? And I'll say, okay, read this book or do this thing. And 99% of the time they don't do it. But like the 1% that do, like they will, like, if you really want to stand out, like take a picture of the book send it to send it to us and then say hey love this book thank you for recommending it like i read it cover to cover i took notes like thank you so much let me know if there's anything else i can do you're in this has become my barrier yeah. to entry when people reach out and they're yeah. like hey i'd Buy love to book. jump on a call with you i'm like great have you read my book and yeah when the answer is yes then let's jump on a call great example of this is um i don't know if you've met chad corbett yet in go abundance yeah, Chad is a freaking insane dude. And him and I got in a call and he was on my podcast. That's how we met. And then we are just such kindred spirits. And this guy's just so insane. He talks about this concept of uh, feeling based goal setting to where he was having like he had like three seven figure businesses that he shut down in one day because he realized that they didn't make him feel what he wanted to feel, which was relaxed as an entrepreneur. He felt stressed and rushed all the time. And so he was like, okay, I'm shutting these down. I'm building a business that makes me feel relaxed. And I sent him my vivid vision and he said, hey, this is great numbers wise, but how do you want to feel running these businesses? And I was like, ooh, that's a great question. So after he told me that, I went back and completely rewrote my vivid vision and I put an entire section about how I wanted to feel and I sent it to him like that night. I was like, hey, I made the adjustments that you discussed. And he was like, whoa. So I didn't even tell you about that. And to this day, like our friendship is literally based off of that. He was like, dude, no one's ever done that before. That's huge. There's a tangible example. It works. It does. It absolutely does. Uh, We could go back and forth about success that we've had because both of us are little networkers. But rather than doing that, I'm curious to hear a little bit more about how you created, crafted your vivid vision. Because as I told you before we started recording, uh, I'm in the middle of my what's next crisis uh, trying to sort through that. And then I definitely want to talk about your concept of passionate income because I think I, like those are both conversations that I've been like scheduling thinking time for the last two weeks to just brainstorm ideas to figure out like what is the thing that – well, hey, this is my show and it's explicit. I can say it. What is it that's going to get me hard every morning to go to work, right? Like I'm, I'm at this point. I start writing in a review for Dave getting hard. <laughs> it's like, you know, you're at this point where you're like, I'm making money. Um, yeah. Now but, what? You know, I can make money as a landlord, but nobody gives a shit or I can make money like helping people like, okay, well that's obviously more fulfilling. So you're trying to figure out like, how do I make money in a way that I actually, you know, that actually gets you excited. And so I would love to hear kind of what your process was for that. Cause I'm, Dude, I'm struggling with it right now. <laughs> the clarity All right, side. So, so two two questions, two processes, two answers. All right. All right. So question number one was the vi- the vivid vision, right? So that that was question number one. So for for the vision, um, what I what I want to talk about is uh, giving yourself some grace because I did not, I was not aware that there were two phases to entrepreneurship until recently. I read a book called the Buddha the Buddha and the Badass. And it talks about these two phases of entrepreneurship called navigation versus acceleration. And so we're so used to being foot on the gas, go, 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 uh, like just blinders. Like that's how we all operate as entrepreneurs. But what does that lead to? Burnout. 
because you run out of gas at some point. You don't stop and fill up at the gas station. So that's not how we're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to just jog it either. Like life's not this marathon that you just jog either. So how we're supposed to do it is through the yin and the yang of navigation and acceleration. So what you do is you take the time to sit and be still and be okay with knowing that you have no idea what the hell's going on. Okay. And you just take time with that. And then for me, this last four months has been a period of navigation because I accomplished my big, hairy, audacious goal, right? I left my job, hit financial freedom. Cool. I'm traveling the world. Now what? Right. And so I've just been like surrendering to that process and just being okay with not knowing what's next. And that's when the idea of the, of the Action Academy, like sex to media group, sex, like, media company came to me because ideas don't happen like lightning bolts. They happen like seeds that are planted from like a quote or a passage in a book or a conversation and they get planted in your mind. And if your mind's too busy, it's not going to sprout or take root. So you need to make sure that your mind's really still. So the period of navigation is when you really just take time to slow down and you just Zen out for a bit, you know, go off the grid, get up a mountain, go to a lake, go to the beach, go to a rainforest in Brazil like just really take the time to think about, okay, do a life audit. Where am I at? Where am I wanting to be? What's the, where's the, you know, discrepancy between the two. And then eventually you get your answer. And then at that point you go into a period of acceleration and then you mash the gas towards that answer. So that's what I'm currently moving into right now is a period of acceleration to build the company because now I have the vision done. So it's really taking time to get still and get quiet. And as entrepreneurs and as action takers, my show is literally the Action Academy. It's like hell on earth thinking that you're not doing anything. But like the not doing is the doing. (laughs) Because that's what allows you to get still enough to get the answers that you're freaking looking for. Because a cheetah in the wild is not just going to sprint 24-7. It's going to stalk its prey and bam, gone. And then it eats, kills, Rest. Then it sprints, kills, eats, rest. I'm going to go out so on a limb that's, and I'm going to guess that you're a Ryan Holiday fan. Love Ryan Holiday. Like we, it's stoic, you, you stoicism. Ego love killing and, and finding stillness. And I'm like, hmm, I'm familiar with ego yeah. as the enemy and stillness is the key. They're, stillness is so the key. It's a book that really helped me out a lot. Yeah. Huge stoicism guy, Seneca, uh, Marcus Aurelius meditations, uh, love those guys. And then, so yeah, Ryan holiday is like the, the new, the new, uh, you know, carrier of that message and that torch. And I love it. Um, I'm trying to get him on my podcast too right now. Um, so yeah, there's the answer to question one. And also with the vision, I would be, be okay with setting the vision and realizing that in three years you may be a different person and it may change. Like that's okay. But what it does is it gives you a, a lens and a framework to view things through when you're making decisions. Cause like now I'm building the media company. I want to have an eight figure media company by December 1st, 2024, help a million people leave unfulfilling jobs. So now every decision that I make and relationship I build is off of that lens of this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And then so people will know, hey, Brian's doing this thing specifically, and then they can help bring people into my world that will help me get there, right? So there's that. Um, And I would also end that with saying that you want to be flexible in your approach to the end destination. So if you're in Atlanta and trying to get to Los Angeles, you may be really set on getting to Los Angeles, but you people get so caught up in the vehicle that it ruins the efficiency of the journey because, you know, sometimes you need to take a plane. Sometimes you need to take a train. Sometimes you need to take an automobile. Right. And there's different parts of each journey. So for me, I thought I was going to hit financial freedom in five years from now through multifamily. But then I started up the podcast, which I didn't even forecast for. And I realized that the podcast got me there faster. And I was like, holy crap. Like I couldn't have anticipated this. So people need to stop being like, I'm only going to do this through Airbnb. I'm only going to do this through Burr. I'm only going to do this through multifamily and be open sometimes to other opportunities presenting themselves to them. And I don't, that's not shiny object syndrome, but I'm just saying be flexible with the approach because I'm sure you can probably attest to this. Like where you are right now, could you have imagined 10 years ago that you would have gotten here the way that you did? I literally just told somebody this yesterday, a good friend of mine, John, who we were just talking about before recording, he and I were on the phone and I was basically, I asked him like, what, what do you see when you look at me? Like, what am I missing? What is, what is it that I'm 
missing that like, you know, forest through the trees, whatever about the vision. And because I literally, I think what I'm struggling with more than anything is what I said to him last night is dude, four years ago when I started the military millionaire, like community, I had no idea that that was going to make a dollar, let alone morph into a quarter million followers and, and all this other craziness. And so for me, I'm like, I'm sitting down trying to figure out a vision and I'm like, how the heck am I supposed to do this when I don't know? Like, I can't even remember how all this transpired. It happened so fast and things changed so much that I was just like, you know, riding, riding the horse, like, Oh my God, where are we going? <laughs> and, uh, so it's, it's weird to think like long term Cause I'm like, dude, things have changed so much so fast. It's like, what's the, what's the navigational beacon at this point? Um, so yeah, you're Those absolutely things right. faster with the vision. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Like I, this was my five year plan to do what I'm doing right now. I did it in six months. Like, so it's just like, it, it's like you find, but that's asking a bigger question. I changed my question to how do I buy like these multifamily units? But then I realized that's not what I actually wanted. I just wanted cash flow and the cash flow is what was important. Okay. How much cash flow? $20,000 a month. Okay, cool. The new goal is how do I generate $20,000 a month remotely while I travel? Like new goal. And that was one, all of a sudden the universe was just like, gotcha, bro. And then just the ideas, people started popping up into my life. It was freaking ridiculous. But the second question that you asked was uh, about passionate income. Um, so that's my whole freaking moniker. I'm even trademarking that bitch. Pass- from, passionate, from passive income to passionate income is like my jam. Because we all talk about passive income, passive income, passive income. There's 10 million passive income financial independence podcast. Cool. Got it. But there's a chapter after that to where you, when you hit financial freedom, now what? Right? So you're not just going to sit on a beach because now you've, you've got the identity of an entrepreneur and now you're uncomfortable not doing anything. And like, we all want to build things. Like that's what we're here to do. That's why we got the freedom was building things. And then you get your freedom and all of a sudden you have 24 hours in your day. That's nothing. And you're like, Whoa, this makes me more uncomfortable than doing stuff. And you're like, what's this anxiety coming from? And so that's where passionate income is important. So I think that passive income is the building block to get out of that first layer of cloud turbulence as you're a plane taking off from a runway. So you're a plane and you're going down this runway and then you buy your first couple of deals, right? Maybe you're leaving active duty and then you're buying your first couple of real estate deals and you're starting to take off into the air and get momentum. You go through that first layer of clouds that like bumps the plane around and you can't see anything. You can't see out the window. It's just gray. But then eventually you get through the, these clouds and you get up to where it's clear and you're just like horizontal again and you're just cruising at 30,000 foot. What then? Because then you're up there for most of the time, Right. So at that point, that's when you figure out how can I take what I'm super fired up about, which is what you're doing right now. You're literally in the same position and saying, okay, if, if I had all the money in the world, like what would I do for fun? And now how do I monetize that? Like what's most fulfilling for me and fun? And now how do I make a living off of doing this thing? And so for me, that's my podcast. Like my podcast is the most fun thing I do. And it's the most fulfilling thing I do because people call and they say, hey, this one episode changed my entire life and business. I'm like, holy shit. Right. And I'm sure you've seen that too. So I'm like, oh my God, this is the most fulfilling and fun thing ever. I'm going to make this entire revenue stream and company based off of this thing. So that's why one of my KPIs is getting that podcast up to a million downloads a month by December 1st, 2024, which is my 30th birthday. And so that's what I'm going to do. Come hell or high water. I love it. I love it. So yeah, I, I agree. Um, I mean, as we've talked about, it's like this weird spot where you hit financial freedom and then you're like, okay, well, I could keep doing these same things, but if they don't fulfill me, then why, you know, at some, at some point, like who cares? Like the money doesn't matter anymore. Right. Like you get to a point where Jeremy hands, he's another go bro. I don't know if you've met him yet, but, um, he was the one who, I think he was saying the way that he says it is like, I want to help however many people get to a point where if I gave them a million dollars, it wouldn't change their life. And I'm like, that's a very interesting way to look at it. Yeah. It's like, cause you get to a point where 
like five thousand dollars a month when you first hit that, you're like, oh my gosh, this is working. I can I can leave. But then like the five to ten thousand is a big difference, and ten to twenty thousand a month is a big difference. But once you- fifty thousand's been wild. Fifty thousand has been the sticking point for me because that's where I realized I was capped out at my individual potential. Um, for, for let me elaborate. For me, generating money by being on calls with my time. I was getting up to 50, 60,000 a month uh, with everything like podcast, like ad revenue, sponsors, and my W2. So like January, February, March, I was making like 50, $80,000 a month. And I was like, whoa, okay, this works. I'm going to quit in March, <laughs> right? And because uh, I was making like 15, 20,000 a month from my W2 on top of that. So I was like, okay, cool. And then when I started traveling, like I tried to maintain that and I was like, wow, this is completely killing my quality of travel. I'm not doing this crap. I'd rather make less money. And so I cut back. So now the next time I make 50,000 a month to a hundred thousand a month, which has been my sticking point so far, um, that's going to be more so a team. And that's going to be with scalability, online products, like courses, community, yeah, stuff like you're that. You're going to let them buy you the Ferrari instead of you buying. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever have a Ferrari. But <laughs> yeah. you think? No, no, not my thing. Travel is yeah. travel's been my thing. Travel, I love travel. Yeah, yeah, dude. There's something about that's why I, I asked you if that was your first time leaving the country because I like, dude, getting out of the country. For anyone listening to this, if you haven't traveled yet into a different country that you don't know, my God, it changes. It changes your life, like the culture, and like so far there hasn't been a country that I've gone to where I have gotten there and been like, wow, we have it really terrible in America. This is, this place is so much better. Dude, I miss America so much. Yeah. Oh my God. Dude, y'all don't realize how (laughs) damn good we have it. All right. So there's so many things. So first off, everyone's like, oh, we're going to go travel to South America or Europe and we're going to save a bunch of money. Not really, bro. Because here's the thing, like down here, fast food doesn't exist. That may be a good thing in the macro. But in the micro, I'm like, I can go to Chick-fil-A, I can pay $6 and have a freaking red, white, and blue fried chicken breast between my buns for lunch every single solitary day. And I love my life. And it's quick. Here, I'm on a like south rural Brazil. I was like, okay, this is gonna be cheaper. And yes, of course, like there are some things that are cheaper and like you could you could you know, eat like shit and live like crap and, and save a bunch of money. But like, you could do the same thing in America. So like, I'm like down here, I get like some salmon and it's like inflation adjusted. Uh, it's like a hundred rei, which is still 20 us dollars. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay, what the heck? You caught it right there. You know, now you get a, yeah, you get a little bit more and then you have target and Walmart. Holy crap, bro. The, that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Like you have to go to three different stores. Like, I had to go to five stores to find a hair trimmer to get this freaking mustache that I've got, like Dave used to have. <laughs> Until he became weak. Oh, grew his beard. Yeah, it's so weak. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. Like, you leave the country, and it is just like, I mean, it's just, it, it's such a good perspective changer. And I love it. Yeah. I will say some of the, the good differences that I see are, um, uh, obesity. Um, the rest of the world it is like not there really. Um, I think, yeah. And people are happier. People are dancing in the streets. People are sleeping in parks in the middle of the day. Like people will just be laying there like in the park, just sleeping with like, and everyone talks about, Oh, you're going to leave America and get robbed. But I'm like, well, they're just sleeping there. Like, in Brazil, everyone just dancing, like, and people, they don't even know each other. Like, they just randomly roll up and start dancing and singing in the streets. And they did that in Barcelona. Oh, my God, dude. It's so cool. Knock, knock on wood. Haven't been robbed in a foreign country yet. Uh, th- Brian, so I, I, I want to be respectful of your time, and I know we've both got things to do. Is there anything that we missed that you want to hit on before we uh, tell everyone where to find you and go subscribe to your newsletter so they can get some real value? Oh yeah, the secret the secret of life and happiness, but my Wi Fi is cut it out. It, I can't tell you. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Uh, no, I mean, in all seriousness, if I were to give like a secret to success and happiness and life in general, um, what I have found to be true in closing is whatever mountain that you're trying to summit, 
you will find that if your emotional sense of worth and accomplishment and happiness is tied to summiting that mountain, you will find yourself lacking in happiness for most of your life because the mountains are never as rewarding as you think they will be, or maybe they are, but it's short lived. Um, and that's even in a literal sense. I've summited some pretty cool mountains and you get up there and you're like, I did it. And now you're like, Oh shit. No, I got to go back down. <laughs> and I can't breathe. It's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. It's like two minutes. <laughs> Um, so I would say to learn to enjoy the climb, enjoy the process, enjoy the practice, enjoy the day to days, take pride in, in winning those days. If you take pride and say, Hey, I did what the eight figure version of me would do today, each and every day, like you can be happy and fulfilled and successful each and every day, regardless of the outcome. So you guys can find me at the Action Academy podcast. I post five episodes a week. I've had some studs like Brandon Turner. I've had this bearded gentleman here, Dave Pere. I've had Jeff Hoffman, founder of Priceline.com, billionaire. Um, that's my jam. Uh, seven day, five episodes, five episodes a week. That I would invite you to go subscribe there. It's every podcast platform. For my newsletter, uh, you can go to the website w two to worldtravel dot com, and that's where you can get a free thirty page ebook with some of the stuff that me and Dave talked about today. That will also pop you on the email list. So, Action Academy Podcast W two to World Travel. There you go. Thanks, and, thanks for having me, guys. And I will link to all of that in the show notes. And dude, thanks for joining us. Dude, thanks for having me. It's, always it's a been pleasure. awesome. Go eat some uh, delicious food and watch people dance without me. And then that's don't, what I'm going to do. Then don't and tell then me go, about it because I'll get jealous. And I'm going to just mess with these monkeys, bro. These monkeys killing me, man. They broke into my house. They stole my bananas from my fridge. Oh, I'm going to go freaking destroy these monkeys. <laughs> oh, so that's man. bonus, bonus excerpt. These freaking monkeys, a family of monkeys have been feeding bananas to every morning. because so they come on my porch and they literally broke into my house when I was gone. And then they literally went through a window, came down, opened up the fridge, threw everything everywhere, ate all the food, took the bananas, left. And the Airbnb host called and he's like, hey, the monkeys are in the house. The monkeys are in the house. <laughs> like, oh, my God, dude, what a problem to have on a Tuesday here. It's my, it's my first one, third world problems. <laughs> I love it. I love wild ride. Oh man. my God. That's <laughs> Thanks awesome. for We're having me on that. That's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode about my journey from military to millionaire. If you liked it, be sure to visit from military to millionaire.com slash podcast to subscribe to future podcasts. While you're there, we'd love for you to rate the show. Give us a review on iTunes. Now get out there and take action.